This is the beginning of a video I was asked to take a look at by one of my subscribers. The climate cult can't be bothered to check mere facts anymore. And within five seconds of making this bold claim, historian John Robson made a huge blooper. Since Arctic ice has actually been rebounding lately and is higher than it's been at this time of year for any point in the last 20 years. Now, to fans of his channel, that upward tick certainly looks like an obvious and significant rebound. Judging by the comment section, people believed it. By the way, you're going to have to use the pause button to read some of these messages on the screen. It's going to be very boring if I have to read them out to you. Anyway, I recognise this reconstruction straight away because it comes from an interactive page on the National Snow and Ice Data Centre website, the NSIDC. This apparent rebound is simply the annual growth of ice every year between September and November as winter approaches. The coloured lines that make up the curve represent different years from 2005, which is why they all follow the same seasonal pattern. So this upward tick does not represent a rebound in ice extent. If you ignore the curve and listen to Robson's explanation, it's a little more nuanced, but equally wrong. Arctic ice has actually been rebounding lately and is higher than it's been at this time of year for any point in the last 20 years. So he seems to think there's a rebound because the line representing ice extent from September to November 2024 is higher than all the other lines representing the same period for the last 20 years. But of course there is no line showing ice extent from September to November 2024 the reconstruction only goes up to January 2024, and Robson posted this at the beginning of April. So he can't possibly show ice extent that hasn't happened yet. Robson's claim that this shows a rebound in ice extent is therefore wrong on both counts. Normally I'd debunk this misrepresentation in a rebuttal video, but I'm working on another video at the moment, so I thought it was only fair to point out the error in a post and give Robson the opportunity to retract and correct the video. To be honest, I was curious to see if he would. In response to me saying this doesn't represent a rebound, Robson came back with a simple retort. Yes, it does. Because, he says, you have to compare it not to conditions in some other months, but to other recent years. Not sure what profession you're in that I should now insult you over, he says, but I hope it's not one where you have to read graphs. Ooh, OK. <laughs> but even if I'm a complete idiot, which I'm not going to deny, this is a simple issue to resolve. Either I'm reading the reconstruction wrong, or Robson is. So I explained my understanding in more detail. Then I showed how professional glaciologists measure ice extent and cited a web page at NOAA. It plots ice extent anomalies for spring and fall since 1979, when satellite measurements of ice extent began. I also cited this page on a NASA website, which plots minimum ice extent every year over the same period. Contrary to what Robson claims, there's a very clear downward trend, which NASA measures at 12.2% a decade. Well, I got no reply. Instead, I noticed Robson quietly inserted a one-line correction, or rather, a note, as he prefers to call it, into his video description. Note, at one minute, there's a mistake. We circled the wrong bit of the chart. The key line is the blue one in the top left-hand corner. I never got an acknowledgement or thanks for pointing out the mistake, neither did I get an apology from Robson for his suggestion that I'm too stupid to know how to read a graph. But that's OK. I was more focused on the fact that his new claim brought up another problem. He doesn't explain why the blue line shows a rebound, but he seems to be implying that if you compare January 6th, 2024, the date marked, with all the other January 6s for the preceding 20 years, the latest one has the highest extent of all 20. Of course, that's absolutely true, but that's a cherry-picked date. I pointed out that if you pick a different date, you get a different result. Robson later proved that himself by saying that mid-April was higher than any year since 2015. So, if we cherry-pick January 6th, we get the highest ice extent in 20 years. If we cherry-pick mid-April, we only get the highest ice extent in 10 years. And again, whatever 2024 turns out to be, we still have more than half a year to go, the trend clearly shows no rebound, 
unless you're going to call every uptick in the reconstruction over the last 40 years a rebound. In which case, OK, it's an interesting take, but it's still rebounding downwards. Anyway, I got this reply. You're rude, but dim. That chart shows this date in 2024, above every year back to 2015. If you can't read charts, don't lecture others about them. Uh, actually, it shows every year back to 2005. It's right there. The years chosen on the NSIDC graphic always get highlighted in bold. Tempting as it was to point out the irony of Robson making a mistake in the chart, in the same sentence he tells me I can't read charts, I was far more interested in his feeling that he was being lectured for having to correct one of his mistakes. After all, in the science world, researchers get corrected all the time. When they submit papers for publication, errors will get corrected in the peer-reviewed process. If any mistakes slip through, they'll get corrected by other scientists in comment papers, and the editors of the journal will issue a correction or even retract the paper if it's flawed. If you get offended or feel you're being lectured and humiliated every time you have to correct a mistake, you're in the wrong business. It's why I positively invite corrections on my own channel. Anyone who's ever posted an age-like-sour milk comment under one of my videos will usually get a polite invitation from me to point out whatever mistakes they think they found. Most of the time they never reply, but when they do I'm always willing to check and happy to discuss it if I can't see the error. If they're right, I'll always post a correction. If the mistake changes something in the conclusion, I'll take down the video and issue a corrected version. I don't berate people who find errors, get angry with them or try to belittle them. I say thank you, even if they prefer to call my mistake a lie or deliberate fraud. This is nothing to boast about. I'm not claiming to be a saint. This is just normal practice in science, and it used to be standard practice in journalism. Having people point out mistakes isn't lecturing me. It's helping me keep my channel as factually accurate as possible. So this was an interesting insight into the modus operandi of one of these so-called sceptic YouTube channels. If a scientific study had made such a huge blunder in its opening paragraph, telling people this represents a rebound in ice extent, the paper would have been withdrawn, assuming the mistake got past peer review in the first place. But Robson's claim is still there in his video. People are still watching it and being shown that this represents a rebound in ice cover. That's very misleading, and to be honest, the whole video needs to be corrected and re-uploaded. And while you're at it, John, if you're listening, you might want to get the rest of the video fact-checked, because there are other errors, and you're not going to find them by telling anyone who points them out that they're rude, dim blockheads and trolls, and that even though you say you welcome comments, those who find mistakes get told to go away. Of course, I'm going to get a lot of your fans coming here and telling me I need to remake some of my videos. Well, of course, I and I have, several times, whenever there's a mistake that changes the premise of the video. Like I said, I welcome these corrections. If you want to know how it's done, look at how I quoted what Robson said verbatim, put quotation marks around it, and then pointed out precisely why his claim was wrong. Again, I'm not patting myself on the back for this. It's simply how it's done. My next video is in the pipeline. Sorry I got diverted by this, but it will be with you soon. And of course, I don't ask for money. I'd love it if you subscribed, but I don't directly benefit from that. I ask that people support a charity that's described in the video description. And here's a brief summary. It's an innovative scheme that trades healthcare for preserving rainforests, resulting in a huge reduction in deforestation and an increase in health. The model is now being extended from the forests of Borneo to Madagascar and Amazonia, funded in large part by contributions from my subscribers. So whether you want to support a charity that protects forests, or one that saves animals, or one that improves healthcare, now you can do all three.